we're going to introduce the Hemholtz and Gibbs free energies. Starting point for understanding these free energies um, is a few things. So let's first let's start back with our Clausius inequality. Right, so we, we had this Clausius inequality um, relating any you know, rever irreversible, reversible path or what have you uh, for our heat transfer to entropy, right? Now we can actually rewrite this Clausius inequality in the following way, where we have negative dq over t. We know that all that's gonna be greater than or equal to zero, right? So we can set up the Clausius inequality in this, um, in this way as well, right? And let's, for, for now, let's consider um, a constant volume process. If we consider a constant volume gas expansion, right? So if we do something at constant volume, at constant volume, right? Then we know that for a gas expansion, dW is going to be equal to zero, right? Since it's just PdV, there's no change in volume, then we have no change in the work. Uh, what that means is that dU is going to be equal to dQ, right? And if that's the case, then we can actually add in dU into this Clausius inequality statement, right? So we can have dS is going to be uh, dS minus dU over T, it's greater than or equal to zero, right? So what this gives us, right? So let's uh, let's kind of uh, solve this for both sides, right? Or put uh, du on the other side, right? So we can have du is equal to t ds, right? So this is just basically putting du over t on the other side and then multiplying both sides by t. You get the following inequality as well, right? So if so, here we have two different scenarios where we can look at uh, criteria for spontaneity. So looking at criteria for spontaneity, right? So the first one is, you know, if we have a, a process where the entropy doesn't change, if we have an isentropic process, right? then we can have a criteria for du where um, du, right, the process is spontaneous when du is less than zero. And we already know from the previous um, evaluation of the Clausius inequality that the process is spontaneous when ds is greater than or equal to zero, right? So this gives us two criteria for spontaneity uh, so we can tell whether a process is going to be real or not, whether it's going to occur. However, there's a little bit of awkwardness with the entropy, evaluating the entropy for spontaneity, because this ds has to be the entropy of the universe, right? So this has to be the entropy of the universe, which means we have to consider the entropy for the system and the surrounding, right? And if you think about it in practical terms, right, oftentimes think about just doing chemistry on a bench top, right? You're doing a reaction and you are, you know, boiling something or you're heating something up. It's releasing heat into the universe, the atmosphere, right? So in that case, if you have any chemistry that's taking place in an open container, your surroundings is the entire lab, right? And so if we're trying to quantify spontaneity in some meaningful way, we really would like to have some properties that don't depend on an evaluation of the surroundings and the system in order to be able to evaluate spontaneity. We would prefer something that really just depends on the properties of the system. This is where the Hemholtz and Gibbs free energies come into play. So we can derive both of these from the internal energy and the enthalpy respectively, right? So let's do the Hemholtz free energy first. So for Hemholtz, the Hemholtz free energy is derived from the differential of the internal energy, right? So we know that for the internal energy, we have du is equal to dq plus dw, right? Now dq if we think about the differential for the entropy, right? So let me actually add this 
as an addendum to this Clausius inequality stuff, right? So if we have uh, ds is equal to dq over t, then we can also re-express dq as tds, right? Basically just, uh, you know, multiplying by temperature on both sides, you can re-express dq as tds. That's going to be important for us for both of these derivations. So what we can say here is that the internal energy is equal to TDS plus DW, right? So um, also we can assume pressure volume work, right? Assuming we're looking at some sort of gas expansion or compression. So we'll have negative PDV, right? So now what I'm going to do here is use the product rule in a very uh, deliberate way, right? So let's say, for example, we wanted to take the derivative of temperature times the entropy, right? Well, if you wanted to do that, then your result would be TDS uh, plus SDT, right? Using the product rule. So what I can do here is actually solve for TDS, right? So we can say TDS is equal to the derivative of temperature times pressure minus SDT. Right, so once I have this, right, I can actually plug this in for TDS in this expression, right? So I've solved for TDS, so now I can plug this guy back in and get the following, right? So I have DU is equal to the derivative of T, uh, TS. Oops, that does not look like an S. There we go. Derivative of TS minus SDT minus PDV. And then what I'm going to do is put um, the DTS on the other side, right? So you end up with the derivative of U minus TS. Well, let me do this step by step. So I'll still have DU here minus DTS is equal to negative SDT minus PDV, right? So you can group these two derivatives together since they're both uh, here on the same side, right? You have derivative of U minus TS is equal to negative SDT minus PDV. Okay, so now we have um, we have a, a, a thermodynamic variable that's defined only using quantities related to the system, right? This is going to be the Helmholtz free energy. This is what we'll call the Helmholtz free energy, right? U minus TS. So for the Helmholtz free energy, we use the letter A in order to denote the Helmholtz free energy. So we can re-express this guy as dA is equal to negative SDT minus PDV. Right, so that defines the Helmholtz free energy and gives it a differential, right? So now it, it has a differential equation that defines it as well. And this is the general definition of Helmholtz free energy, U minus TS. Okay, so in a similar way, we can start from the definition of the enthalpy and also derive the Gibbs free energy. So for the sake of space, I'm going to do that on a different slide and use a different color. So for the Gibbs free energy, right, if we start from the enthalpy, so we have dH is equal to uh, du plus dPV. Right, we know that uh, du can be, uh, well, we know dh right, is going to be du. We know that this derivative is going to be equal to pdv plus vdp. Right, du, we can use the first law of thermodynamics to re express that guy as dq plus dw plus PDV, plus VDP, right? If we're doing pressure volume work, then we know that we have DQ plus or whoops, minus PDV, plus PDV, 
plus VDP. Hopefully you see that these two PDV terms will cancel out, right? One from the pressure volume work, one from the derivative of PV, right? So those two cancel out. And then I'm going to re-express DQ in the same way um, that I did before, right? We had TDS plus VDP, right, DH. Now, again, I'm going to re-express TDS using the product rule, just like I did before. So we have DTS minus SDT plus VDP. Right, so from there, I can do this same thing again. So we can have DH minus TS minus SDT plus VDP. This quantity is defined as the Gibbs free energy. So this H minus TS is the Gibbs free energy. And we use a capital G to denote the Gibbs free energy. Again, defined with properties only using the system, right? So from there, we have DG is equal to negative SDT plus VDP, right? So it also has a differential and its general definition of H minus TS. Okay, so there's an easy way to remember these four potentials because it might be very, you know, kind of difficult to keep them straight in your head. But you can think of a general four square. So let's draw a square here. Right? And I'm going to divide it into four pieces, right? In the top corner, I'm going to put the internal energy, right? So our internal energy U is in the top left corner. Now, when you go to the right of this square, you're going to be adding PV. And when you go to the bottom of this square, you're going to be subtracting TS, right? So notice in all of our definitions here, we're using something minus TS, right? So we got H minus TS for Gibbs, and we got um, U minus TS for A, right? So they're all related by these same terms as plus PV and minus TS, right? So if you do U minus TS, right, that's our Hemholtz free energy, right? So I can put the A down there. So U, so you're basically starting at U. U minus TS is the Hemholtz free energy. U plus PV is the enthalpy, right? And then down here in the right-hand corner is the Gibbs free energy, right? Because you're doing U minus TS plus PV, right? So if, if, if the Gibbs free energy is equal to H minus TS, right? We know that the enthalpy is U plus PV, right? So we can plug that in. So Gibbs free energy can also be expressed as U plus PV minus TS. So if you can keep in mind this little four square, right, then you'll be able to remember the definitions of all of these thermodynamic potentials um, and be able to remember, you know, keep them straight in your head because, you know, it kind of can get daunting uh, with remembering all these definitions. So U minus TS, there's Hemholtz. U plus PV, enthalpy. U minus TS plus PV, that's the Gibbs free energy.